Hi, honey, are you? It's Technicolor, and I don't know if I've actually mentioned this here on YouTube, but I know I've definitely talked about it over on my Twitch channel. I was accepted into this season of The Sims 4 Builder Games World Tour. Our first destination is Sao Paulo, and specifically, my build is the MASP, otherwise known as the Sao Paulo Art Museum. I had a really good time learning about the museum and just researching all of this place because I am not very familiar with Brazil or Sao Paulo or this museum in particular. And I kind of want to go visit now. But anyway, let's check out the speed build. If you're unfamiliar, The Sims 4 Builder Games is a building competition and it's in its fifth season. This time, it's themed as a world tour where each week all of the competitors go to a different destination. I'm up against 30 fellow travelers and five of us will stay in that destination and not move on. So it's an elimination style competition and I don't know if I'm making it to next week. <laughs> I really hope so though. There's two travel guides and 15 judges. And honestly, I've already seen some of the builds of my competitors and they're really good. So I I don't know. I I I hope that I get through, but but we'll see. But I am definitely in very good company. If you wanna know more about the rules for this season, it's basically about embracing different cultures and learning about them and doing our own research and getting outside of our comfort zone when it comes to building, which this build definitely did for me. There are strict dates for when we have to submit our builds and there are penalties if we do not get our builds done in time. We also cannot use previous builds, custom content, or build outside of the specific challenge prompts. However, we can use any pack that we want. We can use game cheats, such as move objects, live edit, debug. We can use CC free art. We can use better build by or the tool mod. I mentioned that there's judges for this competition and there is a strict point-based system with categories such as challenge accuracy, visual appeal, and uniqueness. However, certain elements are not included in the scores, such as outside photo editing, reshade presets, use of the tool mod, which is allowed, but it's not going to be used against you if maybe you don't know how to use the tool mod or maybe you're not that good at it. Like for instance, I used the tool mod in this and it, uh, it, it took me a lot of time to do. <laughs> some of the things in Toolmod because I'm I I don't really understand Toolmod. <laughs> Each of our builds are not from a shell either. We have to build these from scratch, which is very intense, but also a really really fun challenge. Okay, now that I have explained about the builder games and the challenges in general, let's talk about this week's challenge, which is again Brazil Sao Paulo. There were three prompts that we could choose from. I chose the Sao Paulo Art Museum, also known as the MASP, and the building is really cool. For this specific prompt, we needed to have a furnished entryway and at least one exhibition space of choice. In our submission to the judges, we need to mention the architectural work that we were inspired by, and the judges would be judging us on the interior, exterior, and landscaping. And there's no max lot size for this. Something that I thought was very interesting about this building is that it's elevated. And I didn't do the entire museum. There's actually two levels that are sort of built into a hill. And I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do that because I, I'm not very good with terrain tools, at least not yet. I would like to be in the future, but I, I knew that that was going to be a hurdle that was going to be very difficult for me to get past. And it was hard to find interior photos of the museum in general. It was hard to know exactly where certain things were in the building. And once I figured out what parts were in the parts that I was eliminating, I was able to move on and go with the two floors and plaza 
that I decided to include in my build, in my recreation. The top level is honestly my favorite because it it's as close as you can get to the actual museum, in my opinion, in The Sims. There's, there's a few different competitors who I've seen do the same prompt and all of us did a really good job about recreating this. I think all of us were so taken with this specific floor because it's really cool. There's these concrete blocks that have a like pane of glass in the middle and there's no border, but obviously we don't have that luxury in The Sims. And there's artwork mounted onto the glass. It's just, it's just so cool. You'll have to see once we actually get to that point in the build. But I I was just so taken with it and I, I had to recreate that part. There's also these water basin fountain sort of things at the base of the monolithic columns that are those those red pieces and that took me a while to figure out but it also posed some some issues in terms of using a foundation and also needing to use elevators <laughs> more on that later but i i had a really really good time with this challenge but it was also a huge challenge i think that this is probably one of the biggest builds i've ever attempted i actually <laughs> this is going to sound so embarrassing i actually have a dream home that was unlocked as a challenge by my twitch community you know that huge lot on the island in windenburg I decided to build my dream home there and it's a massive lot and the house is massive and it's not even taking up the whole lot. <laughs> and this is, this lot isn't quite as big, but it's still, I don't know. This felt like a very expansive build. I don't know. This, this one might actually be bigger. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, I chose to build the MASP on the Larry's Lagoon lot in Brightchester, which does not have the best lighting, which I didn't know about until I was further along in the build. <laughs> I thought it would fit well into Brightchester. There were a few other lots that I was, I was considering, but I ultimately decided that it would look most realistic on this lot. It's also really nice that the Foxbury campus uses a lot of red. <laughs> so that worked well in my favor too. So like I said, I decided to eliminate those two basement or sub-basement sort of floors. And that was solely because the lot that I chose was a little too small to incorporate that. But also with terrain tools, it would have been very hard to do. And I didn't feel like there were any worlds that the build would fit in and look like it was doing the museum justice. So ultimately, I did decide to scrap those two floors and just go with the plaza itself and then the two elevated floors. I knew for a fact, based on the wealth of photos of the top floor, which is where that exhibition space that I was talking about is, that has the the concrete blocks with the, the glass panes. I knew for a fact that that floor was going to be kind of minimal. It was really just going to be the exhibition space and not much else. So I knew that that floor I had set. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing there. However, that first elevated floor I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. So I decided to use some of the aspects of the floors that I eliminated and bring some of those aspects into this. But I also knew that there were parts that would make sense for a museum that I wasn't really sure exactly where they were in the actual museum. So for that first elevated floor, the floor plan for that boils down to having that reception area when you first walk up the stairs or you come up the elevator. And then to the left is the bathrooms and then the staff break room. Then behind that is a whole long hallway with on one side is the offices for staff and then a museum director's office. <laughs> There's also an archive room, which I had a ton of fun designing. And then there's also a restoration lab, like for like art restoration and stuff like that. I felt like I started to get a little sciencey or a little like 
history museum-y, but I don't know. I hope I don't get points knocked off for that, but <laughs> I, I don't know. I got kind of carried away in that room. In front of the art restoration lab is actually the cafe and the gift shop. While I did spend a fair amount of time on those staff spaces, like that archive room or the restoration lab or the offices, there was also a need for more public facing spaces that were not exhibition rooms. And having to build those was also a little bit of a challenge because I had to decide what items would actually be in the museum itself, like in an exhibition, but also what was going to be included as an item for sale. Like you obviously would not be selling priceless artwork, but you'd be selling prints or you would be selling maybe like merchandise that was specific to the museum, like a hat or a shirt or something like that. So it was really fun to try to design a shop that was selling items that were specific to a museum. Obviously like you wouldn't be recreating a flower shop or thrifty or something like that. It's, it's something that would be specific to a museum and specific to this museum. So to accomplish that, I decided to use a lot of red, but I also decided to have an area that would have more pricier items or more fragile items, I guess you would say, in the back in a display case. One of the workers would come in and they would let you into that case and then you would get that item. And then also having the cafe was really cool because I wanted to have a lot of that use of red, but also have it be a place that people would want to congregate. You would want people to spend their time and shop in these two areas. So I feel like I did a really good job of capturing that because while the main prompt was to work on the museum as a whole and by that, I think most people would just focus on the exhibition spaces. I feel like having those public facing spaces, such as the cafe or the gift shop, are also really important because it brings funding into the museum. I actually really enjoyed working on those two areas specifically. Because of my marketing background, it was, it was really important to me to make sure that we had those spaces in here. So it probably interested me more than the average person, I guess, because most people I think would just be focusing on the exhibition spaces. Another spot in the build that I had a lot of fun designing was the archive room, because I felt like that would be a place where the museum would house a lot of documents or a lot of art that might not necessarily be on display right now. And it felt like an area that kind of like in a, in a college library like mine, we call the stacks and you would have these movable bookcases or whatever they are. And there would be like a kind of like wheel or something that you would have to turn. And I was always afraid that I would get like squished in between them. Can you tell I have anxiety? I, I had a lot of fun designing those. And I believe it's like some sort of bollard. I just tooled it into place. So normally this is something that maybe you would tie your bike up to or whatever. It would be like a fairly big thing that would be in the ground. And I just turned it and then pushed it into the bookcases. It achieved the task of being an archive room. Speaking of tool, I also spent a great deal of time working on the platform where the elevators are in the plaza. Since they needed to be elevated for the, the little pool like water areas, the elevators also needed to be on a foundation that wouldn't be to code and it wouldn't be accessible. So I decided to add in a staircase which you can't see, but that's how your Sims would actually be able to access it. And then I added a ramp. So visually it would look more realistic. So that's not something that is actually in the museum itself. I believe that the elevators just go straight down to the plaza floor. So it's like obviously very accessible that way, but I decided to add in a ramp to make it look more accessible in The Sims. Speaking of the elevators, you might be looking at this and being like, Tech, how did you get six elevators in one build? And y'all, it was a struggle. <laughs> Some of you probably already know this tip, but I did not. I've always thought it was weird that in The Sims, we can only have one elevator on a build and it doesn't move. It just kind of sits there and The Sims just come out of it. So I, I really struggled with that. Originally, you can see that I started to build just a wall and then move windows into place 
to make it look like a glass elevator, which is what it is. And I was just very unhappy with it. So what I decided to do was I got the actual elevators and I found that if you put them in a room and then you copy that room and you place a copy of that room, The Sims only sees it as one elevator. So you're kind of like bamboozling The Sims into thinking that there's only one elevator when there's not. So I, I don't know how functional that is. <laughs> I did have a couple of Sims there and they would come out of one of the elevators. It didn't seem to matter which one. Uh, some Sims would come out of the first elevated floor. Some Sims would come out of the plaza floor. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun to see which elevator will my Sims come out of. <laughs> but I I just thought it was important to recreate all of the elevators and they're actually in that spot in the actual museum. So I thought that was very interesting to be able to include it and the staircase like in those positions. I wanted to make sure not necessarily that I had the measurements of the museum, but I wanted it to realistically look like it was following their floor plan. Unfortunately, we had to stray from that with that first elevated floor. But other than that, all of it fits exactly like it is in the actual building, which again, I've never been to. I've never been to Brazil. I would love to visit now because I feel like I want to see what I've spent so much time on in real life. Like I would love to go there and just see what it looks like. I would like to just look at the art in the museum. I don't, I don't know. It just feels like something that I probably never would have heard of. Like I've never heard of this museum before, but now that it was part of one of the prompts for the Builder Games, I think it's a destination that I would love to see and I would love to visit this specific museum. To me though, the iconic exterior of the museum was the most important for me to capture. So I felt like having that floor plan, even though that first elevated floor yet strayed a little bit from it, I, I felt like we needed the exterior to look exactly like it does in real life. And I feel like I did a very good job of that. I'm, I'm actually really proud of that. It took a lot of research to figure out what the overall exterior of the building looked like to know what I was going to include and what I could realistically not include, but also what the interior looked like from the exterior because it's covered in windows. So you kind of can see certain things and having something that was a accurate visual representation of it for me for the challenge was probably the most important part. And I hope the judges see that, but we'll see, we'll see. Another aspect of the build that I'm incredibly proud of is the fact that the textures sort of match what the actual building looks like. Obviously I made some personal choices for like the staff areas or the reception room, a lot of the areas that were more interior, but like the red monolithic columns and some of the exposed textures, that looks like it would in real life. <laughs> and I actually asked my boyfriend to look at it because he's an architect. And I was like, does this look like it would be what it would be in the actual museum? Or does it look like I just like picked a random wallpaper in The Sims? <laughs> and he assured me that it would look similar to that. I don't think that there's anything in The Sims that would exactly match whatever the material is that they used, but I think that this was a very, very close choice. So I don't know. I, I was, I was very proud of that. I was also very proud of how I designed the plaza as a whole because yeah, having those fountain areas, I don't think that there's necessarily always been like fountains that will like spurt water in those like water pools. I don't I don't know what you would call them. I keep calling them fountains, but I I know that looking on Google Street View that they haven't always had like water things in there. I chose to decide that those were like little fountain things, so that's why I added those. But having those like water basins around, that that has been there and that's that that was a big big thing for me. For that first floor that small exhibition area, deciding what items to put in that 
probably took longer than anything else in the build. Because yeah, there there's a lot of art and sculptures to choose from for that second floor gallery. Also that first floor exhibition space that is right behind the reception area, but also right in front of the screening space. That probably might have taken me the longest in the entire build, just to decide what I wanted it to look like. And I don't think I really had any idea for what I wanted it to look like until I got two items in there. I had that sort of model that is from Cats and Dogs of Brindleton Bay, but then I also had found those like sort of stampeding horses, like that statue. Once I had that, I knew that there was, there was an idea forming, but it took me a really long time to figure out what that idea actually was. And I found a mural. I knew that I wanted something behind the horses and I found a mural that I thought would work. That was also from the horse ranch pack. But then I decided to have some sort of like wall installation. And I, I kind of thought it would be similar to how, like, you know how like, you know how there are some art pieces that depending on like where you are in the room, it'll change the view of it. That's kind of what I wanted this spot to look like. No matter where you were, it almost looked like the horses were actually stampeding through the space. So I, I don't know if that comes across, but that, that was my overall intent with that portion. And then on the other wall, uh, it took me a while, but once I found, I think it's from Dine Out, there was this blue wall decor item that sort of looked like water. And I put that behind that cats and dogs model of Brindleton Bay. And I thought that that really worked. And then also having that weird piece that art piece that like sort of is like kind of like diamonds that sort of like disperse. I've actually used that in another build actually here <laughs> in Foxbury. I, re I redesigned the dorms and I used that in the dorms and I really liked it. So I used it again here and I thought it sort of pulled that corner into space. And then I used a lot of the jungle adventure stuff in the middle and also having that sort of I think it's from Strangerville, that poster of like the alien thing. I don't really know, but I <laughs> I thought that that, it all came together. But then I knew that I wanted to use that gear on the right side. And I didn't know what to do with it because I felt just like having the gear as a statue was a little weird. Like all of the other things sort of like came together that I was really struggling with. And then I found from that, decor to the max kit I found that like I don't know if it's a mirror or whatever it is but it it sort of looks like a portal or something so like that definitely like wherever you're in like you see something different but I figured out that if I put that on a wall and then I push the gear up against it it is like a perfect circle like it fits together and then what I did was because I wanted it to look sort of like man-made but also that existing earth or growth from like industrialism i wanted i wanted to have that in there but it wasn't really coming together until i got that eco lifestyle window and pushed it all together that is probably my favorite part of this entire exhibition space because it, it just looks so cool to me <laughs> I hope other people find it cool. I I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> I was re I was really proud of that. I was very proud of that. But then in the center, I knew that I wanted something, but I didn't want it to be overpowering. Like I wanted you to be able to explore these other areas. And I found from Tomarang from the Forent pack that tiger statue. I was like, okay, we're golden. We're done. We're done here. <laughs> I don't know. Like that, I was like, okay, we're done. That exhibition space is complete. Like after I had done everything else, I knew that the center needed something and having that statue there was, it just tied everything together. Again, I just need to reiterate, I'm not really an experienced builder. So the fact that I was accepted into this season of the Builder Games is kind of wild to me. Like I have only done a couple of shell challenges. I I have a legacy challenge, so I have built a couple of their houses. I've built a restaurant, I've built a cafe, but 
I've never really done anything this extensive before, and I've never recreated something that exists in the real world. So I don't know. I'm excited to compete in the rest of the Builder games, but I don't know how far I'll go. <laughs> Obviously, I would love to continue and win, but I don't know if that's realistically going to happen. There's a lot of talented builders in this season. Like, I, I, I can't say that enough. There's, there's a ton of really talented builders. Again, I'm in really good company, but I, I don't know. I think my plan is I would love it if I could get past week one. <laughs> I just don't want to get eliminated in the first week. So I don't know. I think I think I might have a shot. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> do you think this was good? If you like this sort of thing, I've been posting a lot of speed builds here on YouTube. So if you wouldn't mind liking this video and subscribing, I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow on YouTube this year. That's kind of one of my main goals for 2024. But I, I actually stream on Twitch pretty much every single day, except for Wednesdays and Sundays. And I... I do The Sims 4 a fair amount. We actually have just done a castle build using the new castle estate kit. I was recently invited into the EA Creator Network, so it was very exciting because I was able to give away a couple of kits this past week. And I don't know, we got to explore the castle estate kit. We got to explore the goth galore kit. So I don't know, it was very exciting. But normally on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, at least if you're on the East Coast like me, I'm in New York City, at 10 a.m. Eastern time, we're, we're playing The Sims a lot. And we've been playing with my Around the World's legacy family, the Wyndhams. And that has been very, very fun. Right now we're on generation four and we're focused on cats and dogs but next generation is gonna be focused on Realm of Magic. So I'm sort of like dipping my toes into spell casting. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm very excited. Actually on today's stream, my generation four sim, Luella Wyndham, she just got pregnant. So our generation five sim is gonna be born soon is very exciting actually if this goes live next wednesday which is my plan she will have given birth on yesterday's stream from when you're watching this so kind of exciting so if you if it's a good time to come in and check it out so if you would like to my url over there is just twitch.tv forward slash technicolor same spelled the same way as it is here and i'll drop that link down below too and also if you want to look at the rules for the around the world's legacy challenge i'll i'll post that down there but i'm also going to link to the builder games down below because they've also been posting a bunch of stuff about the season about what people have been posting already with their submissions so be sure to check it out and follow along but anyway why don't we pop into the game right now and i can give you an actual tour because i know speed builds kind of like are zipping around like crazy so it can be hard to see everything and i'd like to show it off a little bit so even though i said that i felt like my build fit into foxbury institute very well and the reds really pop there. I thought it was going to be very perfect. Look at how it looks from the map. <laughs> it really sticks out, but I, I don't know. I'm still proud of it. I think it looks good. So here is the museum on the Foxbury campus. And I think it looks really nice. And then if you go straight into the plaza here, you can see that there are some artists working. There is this rock formation sculpture thing that actually exists there in the museum. I couldn't find much information on it, but this Tomerang debug rock actually looks a lot like it. I was, I was very much surprised. Here's the entrance. So you have the elevators on the left and then on the right, you have the staircase and this is exactly where it would be. So if you were to go up the stairs, you are immediately faced with the elevators and the staircase to go upstairs. And here is the reception area. There's a fish tank also fully stocked with fish. And in here, here is that gear that I was telling you about that I think I did a really good job of, if I say so myself. 
Uh, here are the horses with that mural in the background. And then behind here is the screening space. There's also these curtains here. Coming back into the reception area over here, there are two bathrooms for visitors to the museum. And then through here is actually the break room and then a bathroom for them as well. I also was not sure because based on the spacing where, <laughs> where the stairs are, there's this tiny like one wide <laughs> room and I didn't want it to like be the bathroom because I didn't want people who were in the bathroom. I know privacy is not a thing in The Sims, but I don't know. I felt uncomfortable. So while there is a window there, there there's the curtains that are like kind of sheer. But I thought it would be funny to include this bathtub item and then some greenery in there. So I, I that's that's what I did there. Coming back out and then through these doors is the hallway for the entire staff area. There's all of these staff offices, each of them decorated a little bit differently. This definitely would have been my office because I felt like it's it's very design oriented. There's also a lot of coffee, you know, you know. <laughs> Then I thought that this was really cute. I, I wanted this to be kind of like a more active sim. Then in here, there's somebody who is maybe attending Foxbury, you know. I have a little nod to the location that we're on. Here is also a conference room that I thought I did a really good job of. I feel like the red really pops in here. And then down here is the museum director's office. Then through these doors is the archive room and then past there you can see another door that is to the restoration lab. And there are those debug handles that I was telling you about. You can also see that there's a track system for these to move on. Obviously it won't work in the game but I think I did a really good job of, of crafting this room. In here is the restoration lab. You can see that there are some prints rolled up. You can see that they've maybe been analyzing some of this art. Maybe it's a forgery, who knows? You never know. Same thing over here. Coming back into the reception area, over here you can see the entrance to the cafe. Obviously none of this is going to be functional because it is a museum lot type, but we also have the gift shop and I'm, very happy with the way that this turned out. I was not sure exactly what I wanted to achieve. So I have an area where it's also kind of like part of the cafe where you can like grab a drink or something, but then there's also books for sale. There are maybe some prints, some fashion items that you can get. Like we have a hat, we have some statues, we have some bookends. And then back here would be more of the expensive art. Um, maybe some of this is like replicas of the art that you would find in, in some of the exhibits. From the main reception area, you can head upstairs to the gallery. And this is that crystal glass in the concrete blocks that I was telling you about. Obviously, I had to do a little bit of trials to try to figure out something that would work. And I think these wooden timber blocks from Seasons and the Eco Lifestyle windows is a pretty good compromise for what we have in The Sims. And I think it looks really cool. I think I did a pretty good job of recreating what it actually looks like given the limitations of the game. It makes me wanna go and experience the actual museum on my own. We have a few other sculptures and art pieces here and in the back. There's more sculptures. I actually just recently found this item that I believe is from Realm of Magic or maybe it's cats and dogs and I just thought it was very interesting. There's also just a lot of really cool art in here that I thought was important to include. Like, how could I not include Vladdy Daddy? How could I not? <laughs> so that is my recreation of the MASP and my submission for challenge one of the Builder Games World Tour. I hope you like this speed build video. If you would like to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. And if, again, you want to see more Sims content, I stream every single Tuesday and Thursday, The Sims, over on my Twitch. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash technicolor. I also am currently streaming Kingdom Hearts, so if that's more your style, you, you might want to check that out. But I will see you in the next video, or I will hopefully see you in my Twitch chat, but have a great one. Bye-bye.